So what we're going to talk about here is portfolio insurance. So the goal of this is to create a protective put position on a portfolio when we don't have a put to trade. This is going to be interesting in case you would like to do that. Uh, this will be a strategy that you might want to use in your portfolio and I'll talk a little bit about when. But uh, this is also interesting because uh, the approach we use here is going to be the same approach that we use to price options. Uh, we are going to create a dynamic trading strategy which is going to replicate a protective put position, uh, which is, you know, when we priced options, Black Shoals, and pre option pricing in complete markets, we create a dynamic trading strategy which replicates an option. What we're going to do here is create a dynamic trading strategy which replicates an option spread. So it's quite similar to uh, the method by which we price options. Um, now, what we're going to do here is, is recreate a protective put position. If you don't know what a protective put position is, uh, you might want to look that up before uh, you, you watch the rest of this video. Uh, I have other videos on it. There's plenty of videos on protective put position. So, uh, but you, you'll want to understand protective put. And it, it'll also be somewhat useful if you understand what the Greeks are. Uh, we're going to use the Greeks. You don't need to understand all the Greeks, but we're going to talk about Delta here and a little bit about Gamma. But um, if you understand what the... And I'll, I'll briefly explain what an options Delta is. But we're going to use um, uh, an options Delta to, to recreate this uh, protective put position. Okay, so uh, the idea, just brief review, what we want to re recreate, this would be a protective put position. I have a portfolio, let's say, with uh, that's at 100 right now, and I want to say I don't want to lose, I want to stop my losses if the portfolio drops below 90, you know, I don't want to lose any more. So the idea here is uh, we buy an option, right, I just have it here at $3, we buy an option for $3, a put option, uh, and uh, that will, re you know, th that will mean that now our portfolio um, would break even at 103, our maximum loss is 13, but if the portfolio falls to 90, we don't, you know, it falls to 89, 88, 87, we still only lose 13. So we're going to recreate this uh, protective put position here, which is this sort of squiggly line. Now, the idea of this, what we're going to do, and the way, you know, they, uh, they originally came up with this is to say, well, if we don't have options, and I'll, I'll briefly talk about why we may, we, may, we may not have options, but if we don't have options, then uh, we can't recreate this globally, meaning we cannot just put on a position which uh, creates this protective put. But what we can do is we can recreate this position locally. We can recreate it in a very small interval around 100, and then we're going to use a dollar as the interval, but in reality you might want to do it as a smaller interval. But we're going to create it locally around 100, and then as the stock moves, we're going to rebalance. So that's why we're the dynamic trading strategy. That's the idea of what we're going to do. Now, before we jump into it, why, why may you not have a put to trade? Well, one, you may want to protect your portfolio over a period of time for which put options don't exist. Right? Uh, also, your portfolio, if your portfolio is similar to the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, you can always buy an index option on it. However, your portfolio may be dissimilar to any index, which would mean to put on a protective put on your portfolio, you would have to buy... Uh, options on the individual stocks in your portfolio, which is prohibited from a transaction cost standpoint. So, uh, so you may not, uh, so broadly, options for your portfolio may not exist. So, let's say options uh, don't exist, so we're going to put on, uh, we want, but we want a protective put, so we're going to use this portfolio insurance strategy. So the idea to recreate the protective put locally is simply to observe, and I started writing that, uh, simply to observe um, that, uh, well, first, let's say the delta of the put option. So the idea here is we, this put option isn't traded. However, I still know um, the portfolio value. I know the portfolio's volatility. Right? I can estimate that. Uh, I know the, uh, the time over which I, I want the option. I know the risk-free rate. So using an option pricing model like Black Scholes or others, uh, I can calculate, one, the option's price, but also I can calculate the Greeks for the option. So even though this option doesn't exist, I can still calculate um, the Greeks, right? Uh, that's an important observation to make. I don't, the option doesn't need to be traded for me to actually calculate the price of the Greeks. So I, I decide on the option that I want, even though it's not traded, this is the option I want, so I calculate the delta of that option. And what the delta is, is if the portfolio goes up by a dollar, um, this option will lose uh, 30 cents. So this is what this is. The delta of a put is negative. So because the option value, the put option value will move inversely to uh, the portfolio value. 
So the delta of this option is 0.3. And what that means locally is if the, uh, now, and this delta can change, is the, but what this means right here locally is the, the portfolio, if the portfolio declines by a dollar, so the portfolio goes down by a dollar, the put will increase by 30 cents, and net, that means I lose 70 cents. So the net of a protective put position locally is I lose 70 cents. So what I can do uh, to, to uh, implement, uh, and this is implementing portfolio insurance, is I can sit there and say, okay, well, I'll sell 30% of my portfolio. Now, if I sell 30% of my portfolio, then if the portfolio goes down by a dollar, again, I'll simply lose 70 cents because, you know, now I have 0 0.7, you know, left, um, I have 70% of my portfolio left. So if the, the portfolio goes down by a dollar, I'll lose 70 cents. So again, this implies if the portfolio, you know, uh, change is negative one, then, you know, uh, my, I lose, you know, the uh, net change, or I lose 0 0.7, right? this is in dollars. So the same thing. So this would be if I had a put, this is if I sell 30% of my portfolio. The ultimate effect is exactly the same. I've replicated, and of course, if this was, you know, if my portfolio increases by a dollar, then I lose uh, 30 cents here and I gain 70 cents. Of course, if, the, if it, my portfolio increases by a dollar, then I'll, I'll uh, gain uh, 70 cents here, whereas here I'm losing. So the idea, whether the, the stock portfolio goes up or down, I've replicated, within this small interval, I've replicated the protective put position. Now, the only thing here is let's, let's keep with the, uh, um, you know, let's keep with the uh, uh, decline here. The problem is now, if the stock, the portfolio has gone from 199, the issue here is the delta changes. So the, the delta will actually become something like, uh, I don't know, let's just say a 0.32, right? So now the problem is uh, I'm, I haven't, uh, I'm, uh, I, uh, my portfolio insurance won't work, right? So now the idea, if it falls by another dollar, I should, um, lose uh, 68 cents, but this is, I'm still going to lose 70 cents here. So what I have to do is I, if, you know, every time the stock changes, I now have to do this. Well, I have to sell an additional, you know, so if this is the case, um, so uh, stock is 99, uh, delta changes to 0.32, then if I had a protective put position, you know, we would have this, and I would lose negative six, eight. So what I need to do is sell, I have to sell another 2% of my portfolio, of the portfolio. So now if I sold uh, another 2% of my portfolio, now I'm, uh, I, I have 68% uh, of my portfolio, 68% of my money in the um, portfolio, and then I have 32% uh, uh, of my money in cash. Right? Then, if the portfolio goes down by a dollar, I will lose 68 cents. Right? I lose negative 0.68. Right? So now the stock is at 98. Right? Um, uh, so, but, well, so this is what would happen when the stock is at 90. So let, again, let's say right here it fell, falls again to 98. Then we have to rebalance again. So this say this goes to negative 0.35, right? I should be writing here that you know the stocks, the portfolio, portfolio started at uh, 100, right? Then it goes to 99, right? Uh, 99 was our delta of uh, negative 0.32. Now it goes to 98, right? So now the delta is negative 0.35. So um, if this was a protected put position, we don't have to do anything, right? Um, but considering this is a dynamic replication of a protective put, then we have to sell another, you know, 3% of our portfolio so that our protective put position matches. Right? Again, last time we'll do it. Now, uh, 
stocks at 97, so we have to, you know, maybe this goes to uh, 3.9. Uh, so the idea here is now we have to sell, uh, what if we were at 3.5, sell 4% more of our portfolio, 4% more of our portfolio so that we match. So that now if the stock goes, the portfolio goes down by a dollar, uh, we will lose 61 cents. Right? So the idea of it is we constantly have to trade in the uh, portfolio. So as the portfolio is going down in value, we have to sell more. And this is an important point. As the portfolio goes down in value, you have to continually sell more so that the uh, so that our we're matching the delta, right? Now keep in mind. Um, you know, what we've been doing here is if the delta is 0.39, that means I have to have 39% uh, uh, of my money in cash, 61% of my money in the portfolio. If the delta is negative 0.5, I have to have 50% of my money in cash, 50% of my money in the portfolio. So the idea here is I'm constantly trading my portfolio to match uh, my delta. If my delta is, let's just say the portfolio goes way up, so now the delta is 0.14. Right? Then I have to buy back a bunch of my portfolio to make sure that I'm 14% uh, in cash and then what 86% in my portfolio. So, um, so what we have to do is, again, this is the dynamic trading strategy. But if I keep trading like that, then I can always make sure that my delta of my overall portfolio, meaning cash and my stock portfolio, I can always make sure that the delta of my overall portfolio matches the delta of my put position. And that's uh, portfolio insurance. Right? So the key here is, one, this is, uh, I constantly have to rebalance. Now, one could say, well, how fast do you have to rebalance? And this is where uh, we have another Greek called the gamma, and that is the rate of change of the delta. So the idea here is, depending on the value of the portfolio, this delta may change more or less, right? Um, uh, so the idea, this is where the other Greek, uh, the gamma, comes in to say, okay, well, we can, if, if we want to our portfolio insurance to replicate a protected put exactly, then we have to trade continuously. But realistically, you don't want to do that. There's transaction costs. So the idea here is, um, you know, you can look at your gamma and that will tell you, you know, how often you have to rebalance. There's another important thing here, and this is where portfolio insurance is linked to market crashes. So the idea here is keep in mind, if we employ portfolio insurance, as the portfolio is going down, we're selling the portfolio. As the portfolio is going up, we're buying the portfolio. So keep in mind, we are magnifying, you know, we, because now if the portfolio goes down, we have to sell, right? So our selling actually may push the portfolio down even more. This is why portfolio insurance is blamed for, sometimes some people blame it for the 87 crash, we don't really know. But the idea here is, if a lot of the market participants were using portfolio insurance, then as the portfolio ticks, as the market ticks down, then people have to sell. Right, uh, because now their deltas, uh, um, you know, their deltas have declined, so they need, need to sell to match the deltas. But then their selling pushes the stock market down more, right? Which pushes their deltas down more. So now they have to sell more to match their delta. Uh, but now their selling pushes the market down more. So they're kind of chasing that delta the whole way down, right? And if a lot of portfolio people in the market are using portfolio insurance, you know, they're chasing that delta, pushing the market down. So um, you can get. Uh, uh, theoretically, you could get to vast swings in, in the market created s simply because people are trying to chase that delta, right? Um, so that is why portfolio insurance has been blamed for market crashes. We don't really know. It's just, a, but theoretically, it is certainly possible. Uh, so the important things here are, um, again, uh, that now what what some evidence I did see about the 1987 crash is, of course, people employing portfolio insurance in the market, they know about this problem of chasing deltas. So what they did was they stopped trying to chase the delta. Meaning, in the 87 crash, the delta was moving so fast that they just said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rebalance my portfolio to try to create this protective position because the delta is moving too fast. So I think um, on the topic of portfolio insurance and market crashes, I think market participants are probably smart enough to stop trying to chase that delta uh, in a market crash. Uh, but, so, you know, but the downside of this, as you can see, is if you stop trying to chase that delta, then portfolio insurance would work um, up until the time that you really need it, right? and, then, and then you uh, you stop employing it. So you know, that that qualification would say portfolio insurance only works in, um, with uh, uh, 
steady declines, but not, but, but not crashes. Good. Uh, so that's a brief overview of portfolio insurance, um, uh, uh, and then a little bit into uh, market crashes and, and chasing deltas. Have a great day.